Hi, I'm Jack, and welcome back, because today I'm going to give you guys my top five worst movies of 2022. This is that time. We are now reaching the end of the year, and before I can talk about my best movies of the year, I gotta talk about the five movies I think are the worst I've seen all year. Two things before we get started. One... I don't want to give out unnecessary hate. There's not going to be hate on the movies that I didn't like this year. And I understand how hard it is to make a movie. So this is not a diss on anybody. I'm not going to tell anybody like, oh, this movie should never have been made. I'm not that kind of person. But I just got to be the kind of person where I got to be honest. Maybe there are movies that didn't, that didn't work for me. But maybe it worked for some of you. But this is just going to be a video where... If I'm going to talk about the best movies of the year, I might as well talk about the few movies this year that just did not work for me. And therefore, they're on this top five list. I just want to let you guys know ahead of time, this is not to bash on anybody making these movies whatsoever. And two, just to let you guys know ahead of time, I'm only going to pick five movies because I haven't actively seen a lot of movies that weren't so well received this year. So movies like Firestarter or whatnot, haven't seen don't know much about so i'm not going to talk about them so any movies that may be on your list or the list of other people you may have seen they're not going to be on this list probably aside from a few of them so just keep that in mind this is my list it's just all my opinion i have no disrespect to the people who are behind these movies but i just gotta talk about them because these are some of my least favorite movies i have seen all year so kicking off the top five we have spiderhead Joseph Kaczynski is innocent. He has made one of my favorite movies of the year with Top Gun Maverick that you will see on my best movies of 2022 video, which I'm going to be much positive on. And I do really like Chris Hemsworth and Miles Teller in the movie. There's some good ideas to be found in this story, but all it is is just it's test and testing over and over again. And the movie's way too slow. There are so many ideas here that it didn't capitalize on as well. And it feels like the movie's totally at odds with each other, trying to be a movie that has some elements of Deadpool in there while also trying to be a little bit more serious and grounded with its ideas. The movie had an identity crisis and it just did not capitalize on the potential it had and it really stinks because of the talented crew and people behind Spiderhead. So is it a movie I hate? No, absolutely. But for what it had in its baggage, it was really disappointing to me. And so Spiderhead was a movie where I loved Chris Hemsworth and Miles Teller. It had some neat production into it. There's some good ideas here, but I just didn't really like the execution of it as a whole. There are so many ideas here where it's like, this could have made a really great movie if the story was a lot better, the script was better, it was more focused, and if it wasn't as long as it was. And the movie just felt way too predictable, too, where I knew immediately how this was going to end. And I was exactly right. In fourth place is Pinocchio. Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio is one of the best movies I've seen all year and perhaps my favorite animated movie of the year. But I cannot say the same thing about this one, because as much as I love Tom Hanks and Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Robert Zemeckis, this movie is exactly what I was afraid it was going to be. It remakes the animated movie beat for beat for beat. There are a few sprinkles of new things. Doesn't explore any of it. It's just there, and then it moves on to the next thing without a thought. That is exactly what I don't want in these remakes here, because I love Disney. I love their animated movies. I love what they've done with Pixar and Marvel. But these remakes have not really won me over. Outside of the Jungle Book remake from 2016, I'm not really the biggest fan of these remakes. And Pinocchio is, once again, another reason why I just don't really care as much for them. Because they're remaking a story, but you don't have the magic or the heart or what made the original stories just so good in the first place. And the CGI and the animation here, at times it can be kind of cool, but then at times it looks very off and weird, especially when you're trying to bring a story like Pinocchio into a live action medium it's just full of ideas where it works in animation but it just doesn't translate as well into live action and Robert Zemeckis has made some of my favorite movies of all time like Back to the Future but it feels like this doesn't even feel like a movie Robert Zemeckis would have made it just feels like a carbon copy of that animated movie but just brought in a live action but you don't have the magic or the heart of Pinocchio. And it made this a pretty boring movie to sit through because you know how it plays out and I knew how it plays out. And in the end, I just sat there like just another one once again and I just did not care for this. 
In third place is Amsterdam. I dare you to play the drinking game and take a shot every time somebody says Amsterdam because I promise you for a fact you're going to be knocked out not long into this movie. It's a trap! And... This movie is such a sluggish bore fest. I love so many of these actors in this movie. Christian Bale, Margot Robbie, Robert De Niro, Zoe Saldana, Michael Shannon. There's so many talented people all across the board. And for an idea like this, it should have been at least solid, right? No, it was not. It was slow, it was boring, and the worst thing you can do for me is be so unfunny, because I'm not the hardest person to get a laugh out of, I promise you that. But even this movie, I barely laughed in. And the second thing is the mystery itself, so predictable. I knew who the killers and the reveals were going to be before they even happened. And that is not good. We've had good murder mystery movies or whatnot, like Glass Onion earlier this year, where it does a good job at having twists and reveals where you're guessing who could it be or whatnot, or who, what's the end result. This movie, half an hour in the movie, I was like, it's them. And I was. And not only that to you, but the way scenes played out, the logic behind it just makes little sense to me. I don't know why things will play out like that. Oh, oh my God, what's oh. the matter with you? Oh. What the oh hell did God. you do? Valerie, what have you done? What's the matter with you? What did you do? We had everything we needed to prosecute, and now it's all out the window. So many cast members were underutilized significantly, like Zoe Saldana and Michael Shannon and Anya Taylor-Joy. There are so many A-list actors in this movie. And it feels like they were just there for a paycheck. And I love a lot of these actors, but this movie, it was so not good. And they say Amsterdam way too many times, despite the fact that it's not even set in Amsterdam. Which is, that's baffling to me. Amsterdam is a sluggishly boring movie and it could have been good, but it wasn't. And as much as I love these actors, this is one of the biggest duds I've seen all year. In second place is Morbius. The biggest crime this movie commits is not having the line, it's Morbin time. No! Oh! Not how this was supposed to go! In all seriousness, Matt Smith is trying. He does seem to be trying to have a good time with Morbius as Milo. Yes, but this movie is one of the worst comic book movies I've seen in the past several years. Comic book movies are some of my favorite kind of movies out there. And when I have a movie like Morbius and it's bad, but not even in a so bad it's good way, but bad it's boring, we got a problem. And throughout this movie, I was so uninterested. I did not care about Morbius as a character here. I didn't care about the relationship between him and the nurse. I did not care for anything that was going on. There was no emotional weight for me to be attached to what's at stake here. And the movie just rushed so much of the story just to go from point A to point B to point C. And Morbius at, as a character did not change. He's the exact same character from start to finish to where by the end of the movie, there's no sense of payoff, no sense of satisfaction. And I'm sitting here with a movie where the action sequences are so dark to see because of how they play out. And it reminds me of a 2000s superhero movie, but with all the worst possible qualities it could have. And to make the cherry on top of it, not only does this movie have marketing where it's like, which Spider-Man universe is in? Is this in the Amazing Spider-Man universe? Is this in the Raimi universe? Or is this in the MCU? We have none of that. And the end credit scenes of this movie are some of the worst I have ever seen in a comic book movie. Not only does it completely butcher Vulture's character from Spider-Man Homecoming, but his appearance in this movie feels so shoehorned in it makes no logical sense why vulture would come to these terms when he's here not only that too but it contradicts the multiverse rule of spider-man no way home which basically means they're trying to set up this spider-man movie universe that doesn't even have a peter parker that we know of and they're just doing all this stuff and it contradicts the whole multiverse rules and all that stuff. And then you have a movie like Multiverse of Madness, which gives us this and it makes what happened to Morbius even dumber. Why? And I don't have any faith for this universe. I love the Venom movies. They're fun. But Morbius, 
it was boring, it was dull, I did not care for this movie, I didn't have much excitement for it coming in, but it even went way below my expectation level for Morbius. So in the end, it comes in at number two, and the only reason why it wasn't at number one is because in first place is The Bubble. The cast did a good job. I like Karen Gillan and Pedro Pascal and Keegan-Michael Key. They tried with what they had to work with. There's talented people behind the scenes who've made some really good movies before. The Bubble should have been a hit, but it wasn't. <laughs> Like I said with Amsterdam, I am not the hardest person to get a laugh out of when watching a movie. This movie succeeded in all of the things I was hoping it was not going to succeed in. And that's not make me laugh, make me feel bored, and not engage with anything that is happening. And it made me not care for a lot of these characters. You're, you have a lot of these characters be pretty unlikable people and pretty much jerks to each other aside from a select few. So you automatically have a movie where I cannot care for a majority of them. It's way too long. It should have been 90 minutes, no more, no less, but it was even longer than that. And I really felt that runtime. Mm -mm. No, 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 no and it did not help at all. If I feel the runtime, that's a red flag. And not only that too, it's barely funny. I barely laughed in this movie. And that says a lot because there are some cameos here that are pretty cool, but that doesn't redeem this movie in any shape or form. And for a movie trying to be a satire, it just isn't very good at what it's trying to do. Tropic Thunder is one of my favorite satires of all time. It feels like this movie's trying to be a satire off of COVID, but it just doesn't do a good job at it. It didn't succeed in the goals it was trying to accomplish. And it could have. There's good people working on set of this movie, but this one was an absolute misfire for me. I didn't care for it. It was unfunny. I did not connect with the characters whatsoever. The th situations that play out are so ludicrous in a bad way where I'm like, what is going on here? What? Where did this come from? It's just, it's so much of that for, for two hours. And this was one of the most dull experiences I've had watching a movie all year. And I have not watched a movie this year that I've disliked more so than The Bubble Again, not to discredit anybody working on this movie because there's good people behind the scenes of this movie. Others, crew members here have made good movies that I really liked before, but this one just didn't work for me on any shape or form. So in the end, my worst movie of 2022 in this time has to be The Bubble. Okay, there we go. There we have it. That is my list of my top five worst movies of 2022. What's your picks for your worst movies of 2022? Let me know down below in the comment section. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Stay tuned. I'm going to have my best movies of 2022 review coming out very soon. So I hope you guys will stay tuned for all that fun stuff coming your way very soon. And don't forget to follow me on social media. My username is down below at the bottom of the screen and in the description below. So please go do that while you're at it. And thank you guys so much for watching. And don't forget to hit that like button and the subscribe button and stay tuned for more.